In recent hours, Project Acheron received a transmission from one of our agents in deep cover around the Middle Heavens, a part of our Operation Vigilance. Codename Agent 6 has been seeking out information and data around the David and Ash model synthetics and the connection between these two that might change the nature of the way we see the events surrounding the USCSS Covenant, Prometheus, and the Nostromo. And so with that said, we have to declassify some of our project's recent findings and explain the evidence that we believe might point to the rogue synthetic David 8 and that of the sleeper agent uh, android Ash being one and the same. This is agent number six. Recently I was able to uncover data vital to Project Acheron, information worthy enough to attempt breaking cover to send out this transmission. After embedding myself within the Union of Progressive People's Ministry of Space Security, being that the MSS must have sources deep within the Three World Empire, and perhaps even Wayland yutani Corporation itself, I've discovered footage and data logs from the USS CS Prometheus, USS CS Covenant, and USS CS Nostromo. After reviewing these logs and footage, I'm certain that the Praetomorph is a biological weapon developed by the prototype Android David 8, and that this rogue android is not only still active, but stands as a possible contender of the true identity of the border bombers, who have been behind the accelerant attacks on the border colonies. Upon review of the data logs of the USS CS Prometheus, I have concluded that David 8 was not responsible for the destruction of the ship. However, it was apparently responsible for the deliberate infection of Prometheus crew member Dr. Charles Holloway with the engineer's chemical accelerant. This is a violation of the first rule of robotics. It isn't surprising when you consider the fact that Peter Wayland programmed the David 8 prototype to be more independent and simulate emotions. I speculate that David 8 was operating under orders. However, whose orders remain unclear. A message left behind by the crew member Dr. Elizabeth Shaw on LV223 revealed that David 8 and Dr. Shaw were the only survivors of the Prometheus and that the two had commandeered an alien ship found under the surface of LV223 in order to search for the homeworld of the alien race known as Engineers. The footage and data logs of the USS CS Covenant show that David 8 was directly responsible for the disappearance of that ship. Seven years into the Covenant's journey to Orgai 6, the ship was hit with a shockwave from a stellar ignition that damaged the solar arrays and killed Captain Jacob Branson. After intercepting a transmission during repairs to the Covenant's solar arrays, the Covenant crew, now under command of First Officer Christopher Orem, newly promoted to captain, decided to survey the fourth planet in that solar system. The transmission had come from Planet 4 and was seemingly a perfect candidate for habitation. Upon landing a survey team that included a Walter-type Wayland yutani android in an attempt to explore the origin of the transmission, chaos ensued as two of the crew were infected with neomorphic motes, which birthed neomorph creatures that managed to eliminate three more Covenant crew members and destroy the Walter unit's left hand before being driven off by David 8, who swooped in to save the crew at the last minute. David 8 led the Covenant crew to safety and lied to them about the nature of the bombing of the engineer city they were now within an event he was directly responsible for after utilizing the accelerant payload aboard the ship he and Dr. Shaw had commandeered years prior. Shortly after he learned of the Covenant, David 8 planned to take control of the ship. Subsequently, David 8 led more crew members to their demise at the hands of the Praetomorph. At some point, David 8 and Walter 1 engaged in a confrontation. David 8 then apparently disguised himself as Walter, leaving the latter synthetic for dead on Planet 4. The official MSS investigation says David 8 stole parts from Walter in order to infiltrate the Covenant crew, but I'm not buying it. Director, I've gone over the data logs for months, and if the idiots run the MSS think David 8 merely stole parts from the Walter unit after destroying him, they are completely blind. I don't have any proof, but I'm certain that David 8 uploaded himself into Walter's body. The damage that the Walter unit's body sustained in combat with the Neomorph is too consistent, and the David 8 prototype has already shown it has advanced capabilities beyond that of normal androids. Who knows what Peter Wayland has secretly programmed this thing to do? The project director would like to reiterate that the David 8 model seems to have not stolen the Walter 1 body. Instead, what we presume is he simply stole his clothing in order to fit in and blend in amongst the crew. 
Evidence for this is presented when David is on the US CSS Covenant and requires Daniels to repair damage to his skin, something that a Walter model would be able to do himself. Now, whether this is because David did steal the body and is simply uh, keeping that self-healing uh, ability from activating in order to keep his cover is uncertain. However, from all evidence gleamed, I am one to think that he did not steal the Walter body and is still operating within his David 8 model synthetic body. This continues to be a point of conjecture between the project directors and the agents in the field. After Captain Daniels somehow destroyed the initial Praetomorph, crew returned to the ship unknowingly with David 8 and a Praetomorph impregnated crew member in tow. Crew member gave birth on the ship and David 8 used the situation to run a weapons test. David 8 helped Captain Daniels and pilot Tennessee Ferris hunt down and destroy the Praetomorph, but not before it killed two more crew members. David 8 was not expecting the crew to be successful and determined the Praetomorph to be too aggressive. With the creature destroyed, the last two members of the flight crew went into cryo sleep. But records show David 8 revealed his deception to Daniels before she was rendered unconscious. Before the Covenant completely disappeared, David 8 contacted Wayland Nutani and detailed the depths of his depravity in a collection of highly classified transmissions. It's pretty disgusting stuff, even for an old soldier who's seen a lot of carnage. Logs and footage of the events on the USS CS Nostromo were quite interesting when paired with the account of Warrant Officer Ellen Ripley and the events surrounding the Covenant. According to the evidence and testimony of Ellen Ripley, the Nostromo's mother unit revived the crew and informed Captain Arthur Dallas that a distress signal was emanating from LV-426. That's right, Director. The very planetoid Hadley's Hope was founded on. The Nostromo landed on LV-426 and deployed a small contingent to investigate the distress signal. There they discovered an alien ship similar in size and shape to the ship encountered by the crew of the Prometheus. Executive Officer Thomas Kane was unfortunately impregnated by a xenomorph XX121 larvae known as a facehugger. Here's where things get weird, Director. The Nostromo science officer Ash completely violated quarantine procedures and let Kane onto the ship. He closely examined and showed a great deal of intrigue over the xenomorph XX121 materials. He then proceeded to observe the crew, and after Kane gave birth to a chestburster, became seemingly further infatuated. Ash provided help where he had to in order to maintain his cover, giving the crew as few tips as possible, and providing them with a motion tracker so the crew could attempt to track down the creature. It would appear he already knew of the creature's rapid growth cycle due to the fact he was willing to allow them to track it down. The Xenomorph took engineer technician Samuel Brett and Captain Dallas for unknown purposes before Ripley uncovered Special Order 937. The order reads as follows. The Nostromo rerouted to new coordinates. Investigate life form. Gather specimen, priority one. Ensure return of organism for analysis. All other considerations secondary. Crew, expendable. After a brief but violent struggle with the last three crew members, Ash was revealed to be a Hyperdyne Systems 120A2 android. During the evacuation, Ellen Ripley became the sole survivor after ejecting the Xenomorph specimen out of the escape shuttle airlock and burning it to death with the sublight engines. After months of observation of the data logs and footage of these incidents, I came to a shocking revelation. I believe that David 8 and Ash are the same program. One could argue that Ash is a completely different make and model just following Special Order 937. But after spending months poring over the data of what happened on the various ships, Ash and David 8's mannerisms and speech patterns are too similar to be a coincidence. Both even refer to Xenomorph XX121 as the perfect organism. Ash's actions aboard the Nostromo mirror David 8's weapons test on the Covenant. Ash even screamed, DON'T TOUCH IT, like a parent defending a child when Chief Engineer Dennis Parker threatened the newly born Xenomorph with a fork. That is a pretty emotional response from what is supposed to be a standard Hyperdyne Systems 120A2, don't you think? Both androids have defended Xenomorph XX121 specimens and committed actions to allow for their growth and study. At one point, Ripley even found the ship's cat, Jones, trapped in a locker shortly after the birth of the chestburster on the Nostromo. Was Ash protecting the chestburster from a predator that could pose a problem at that stage of the life cycle? 
I suspect David 8 has the ability to upload his consciousness into other androids and possibly even computer mainframes. At some point, I believe his prior body either broke down or was destroyed, and David 8 uploaded his consciousness to the Hyperdyne system's mainframe. Also, consider the name Ash. What is Ash? Ash has three definitions. Number one, the powdery residue left behind by a burned substance. Number two, the remains of something that has been destroyed, ruins. Number three, the cremation of the human body after death. Possibly an allusion or symbolism to the Promethean myth? David 8 loves his symbolism, so it's a very real possibility. Here in the heart of the UPP, there are David 7 models everywhere because the UPP uses a lot of antiquated tech. And knowing what I know, and having seen what I have seen, I don't trust a single one of them. They scare the hell out of me. Especially after the MSS intelligence reports on the Ariarchus accelerant attack in the Kruger 60 star system on both the UPP and the United America forces. A lone David 7 android was observed defecting or cooperating with the Colonial Marines after the attack. The David 7 models here in the UPP are totally stripped down shells when compared to the initial prototype. They would be completely unable to cooperate with the enemy, much less defect due to their programming. Has David 8 come to the UPP looking for a familiar face to procure? Androids aren't supposed to be capable of vanity, but they aren't supposed to be capable of violating the first rule of robotics, lying, stealing, committing genocide, or developing biological weapons either. I don't have all of the evidence, but I've been at this long enough to know that where there is smoke, there is fire. This is Agent Number 6, signing off. Before you close off this transmission, I want to show you the Acheron Colonial Marketplace, the one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merchandise. All proceeds go to fund our future endeavours under the project, so if you want to support the project and look good at doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other data logs would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions to be answered, please leave them down in the comments or contact me through the LV426 Discord or the LV223 subreddit. If you really want to support what we do here and gain access to a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Acheron channel member, like Project Director Chris Dussinger, Company Representative The Sixness, and Team Members Raunchy, Ambrosia, and The Ryan Smee. I hope to see and hear from you all again very soon. Project Acheron, bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.